I'll just start. Okay, so let's uh, let's continue. Um, so we've been talking about um, sex and sexuality, and and uh, you know the kind of um, uh, the the biblical view of it, what the scriptures talk about. So, um, so yeah, for us to have a biblical view before we get into marriage, and also hopefully you know it'll. Uh, uh, clarify certain things in our own mind if we are already married and well this is what the word of god says and this is what uh, our view should be when it comes to marriage right so um yeah um uh, any questions um so far any questions on what we've been uh, discussing um uh, first i have a question yeah, John. Go ahead, please. Um, so this is uh, something which has happened. Uh, um, so can you be slightly louder, John? Sorry. Just... Show sure, us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, something which has happened recently. Okay. Um, one of the one of the couples which uh, I personally know, they uh, individually they had gone through a divorce, and. Uh, now uh, they got to know each other uh, through a different source and um, individually they had gone through a divorce and now they are coming together and uh, um, they have uh, been engaged but not married um, but uh, something uh, you know the uh, intimacy relationship has started before marriage um, so uh, is there a way uh, we can uh, you know of course we can talk about this uh, the importance of it but how do we handle this kind of a situation they are not yet married into a covenant relationship mm. but they are engaged um, yeah yeah i think to, to really point to this truth and um, and uh, tell them very firmly uh, lovingly but firmly uh, to say that uh, you know, this is the standard, this is the expectation of scripture, this is God's expectation, and, um, you know, anything else um, is going to have consequences. You know, it's a, it's a, sex is a gift uh, to be enjoyed within the context of marriage. So um, I think uh, maybe uh, if you get an opportunity to talk to, talk to the person, talk to the man, and also maybe as a couple, if you can get to talk to the couple, um, to talk to both of them and say, you know, this is what it is. Um, like if they have, uh, I, I don't know who is actually, you know, confided. So whoever's confided in you, you know, maybe you can just tell that person that, uh, you know, this is what it is and you need to do whatever it takes in order to wait, you know, the other thing is also as a church, if you're looking to the church to solemnize, you know, this is our expectation again. This is our standard, you know, for the, for, for the couples who are who need to be prepared for marriage. You know, this is a standard. And the standard is, it's just a biblical standard. And this is the heart of God. So, you know, we'd like you to do that. So do that firmly and hope, yeah. And I'm sure they'll see reason. Yeah, so that's the thing. Yeah, but, uh, it, it came through parents and uh, they oh. are part of another church. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Oh, they are part of another church. It came through some other source and it's a little tricky um, mm -hmm. because uh, they'll want to know who, <laughs> you know, how how did you get the information and it's going to create a lot of things. But then, um, yeah, maybe, I don't know, this is, a, this is a difficult thing, right? The parents come here, the couple goes elsewhere. And uh, yeah, maybe the parents can talk to uh, you know the the leader of the church or the pastor of the church where they attend. You know, the couple attends. Um, yes, pastor. Yeah, maybe that's the that's the best way. Uh, and of course, um, one of the ways to do it is to give them the resources. You know, uh, ask the parents to give uh, the couple the resources. You know, Christian resources. She talks about marriage preparation, and it's a, it's it's a actually a very complicated. Uh, I mean, I, I won't say complicated. It's it's slightly complex than preparing for a, you know, a regular thing because both of them have a, 
uh, have had been, previous yeah. yeah previous marriages so they have uh, you know all that baggage and and it's not worked so you know so they have all that baggage so definitely they should go through a marriage uh, preparation you know which will prepare them uh, go through a time of prayer healing um, you know get rid of all those baggages hurts regret pains because they're going to be looking at their you know though right now they might be all excited and emotionally caught up in things but they uh, you know they're going to be carrying all that pain and trauma into the this relationship and you know, looking at uh, the other person you know in with all that those filters you know suspicion whatever hurt um, so it's important that they go through uh, the, uh, preparation and any children from the previous marriage no pastor no. not for okay. both of them yeah yeah because that again will add to it that also because the children also have to be prepared if that is the case um okay thanks john yeah that's yeah thanks yeah okay okay um i think some of the questions that normally you know people ask is uh, okay i had a past okay i had a past of uh, maybe multiple you know relationships which involved sex so now how do i you know go forward with it uh, with this right um, so i think we kind of address that thing is to repent which means not just acknowledge but also to forsake right um so what happens is like if there has been a past uh, relationship um uh, physical relationship uh, maybe it was one person maybe it was multiple people what happens is the the emotional thing you know sometimes continues right and um, and and also to to see you know has there been any further communication you know sometimes people come to the thing saying okay we are just friends now you know we have uh, forgotten everything and uh, we have kind of uh, decided to go our own separate ways uh, but we are friends now and okay so so what are you doing as friends will we 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 chat we talk we uh, do all that you know so the thing is there is still that emotional bond um you're talking and and, and it's very very dangerous you know it's dangerous territory right so so one has to have a complete uh i might even use the word surgical right? cutting away of that relationship or relationships right all the emotional bonds everything uh, needs to be completely cut away before uh, going on you know, into this or you know maybe if you you know if this person is married and if they had you know a similar thing to cut away emotionally to cut away all forms of uh, you know communication you know, no texting no calling you know it's absolutely um you know it's it's not uh, warranted okay now in today's society again you know th there is a complexity you know in the sense uh, what what if uh, you know you uh, you've had a divorce and then there is a child from the previous marriage and you know as a parent you have visitation rights um therefore you need to anyway you know be in touch with your you know former your ex wife or ex husband and well you know then also you know you know that uh, it has to be within bounds you cannot uh, you know emotionally you cut away completely but then for the sake of the child of course you you are in touch and coordinating certain things maybe child education maybe there is fees to be paid you know so many other things right um but so one has to be prepared for that and right? and um, so definitely what we would suggest is uh, go through a marriage preparation you know and uh, even after uh, you know something like that to to be prepared for that you know there are ministries which um, you know uh, kind of who are called to that you know that this is their calling you know because it's uh, it's a very complex uh, society that we live in uh, it was not how it used to be and uh, and sin has really ravaged and broken relationships and and created such a havoc but there is redemption there is restoration in christ and the message of the cross is is you know for us for, for christ will uh, you know, save the uttermost right so yeah so sadly you know we see that in church as well you know among people of god 
so um so the church needs to be equipped to handle you know such um scenarios uh provide because the cross speaks restoration um in all such scenarios yeah okay so what help can pastor's wife get if the pastor is in sexual sin like pornography um when the wife doesn't want to bring this to the open because of the fact that the ministry will be at stake and children too yeah yeah that's a very again a real scenario um you know what we read about etc so the thing is for the pastor's wife um to get help from another maybe another pastor couple you know, uh someone whom the pastor looks up to someone whom the you know as a couple you're fellowshipping with them you know um but um okay level 1 is definitely for the couple to talk to each other like the wife to talk to the husband um and uh, and to say that uh, okay this needs to be dealt with it's not helping us it's not helping the marriage uh, it's not helping the ministry um uh, it's it's definitely detrimental in all counts right so uh, and the person also living with so much of guilt and shame is trying to push it away you know it's it's uh, it's like a time bomb you know just waiting to explode on the inside implode rather so uh, first of all uh, for the wife to address it to the husband bring it to the husband and and the husband to come to a place of saying okay i need help Uh, that's thing because if the person says i don't you know you just mind your own business i'm going to do this and um, you know it's going to be a very difficult thing um but of course uh, either ways you know if there is another pastor couple and uh, who can be confidential or another pastor counselors or you know some or even a marriage counselors another couple who can be confided in and who can keep these things confidential uh and uh, and do this right um uh and do the whole process of restoration counseling and so on and also it's important for the person for the one in ministry to to uh, to take a break while all this is happening right um sometimes it's i don't know whether in this situation it will be possible because there another person to step in and you know to take a break so it's a, it's quite a it's a difficult thing but first of all uh, it starts with confrontation loving confrontation it starts with acknowledging that it's a problem um so i would say practically um the wife needs to do it you know there needs to be loving confrontation um and it needn't be bringing out in the open it doesn't have to be like you're dragging the person's name in the mud you know it's like uh, it's this doesn't have to be that so bringing uh, to open is bringing it to the knowledge of people who can be trusted and who can speak into their this problem and uh, bring restoration so that is that is a biblical model that we see you know the lord jesus also you know says that if if uh, you have a problem then you go and ask that you tell that to the brother and uh, and then uh, and paul actually writes about that like to Timothy he says okay then you take two others with you right and then if the if the problem still continues then you need to make it public there's no other it's a painful thing but it has to be made public right so so that is the pathway and hopefully you know the person will um, change um, yeah rosk i hope that helps okay any other question uh pastor one more question yeah go ahead go ahead uh, john and yeah. after john uh, uh, success can have his question yeah uh but when we talk to young people about um a physical uh, intimacy let's say before marriage is uh, holding hands hugging or all these things okay or where is the limit mm so it's again a very subjective thing right um, so it, it, you know it depends on the uh, on the culture as well right culture in a particular place um like if you, uh, typically in india you know the 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 home 
my hometown where i grew up in uh, well there was no <laughs> there was no holding hands there's no question of hugging um well there was shaking hands when you wished for christmas and new year and that was it so even when we said hello it was it was like that right i mean you know now things are changing if you go down, down further south it's even more conservative place where i where i was born uh, you know very conservative it's like uh, people wish each other you know with folded hair, palm and and that's that's how it is so there's no thing but um, the thing is okay um, okay there is a there is a you know uh, if, if you look at other cultures maybe you know they are wishing each other this way and uh, you know so there is a there is a boundary okay between uh, there is a difference between sexual touch and a non sexual touch right so so one needs to be clear in that and um, and talk to the young people about that so that is that and then make it very clear that uh, um, uh, well you know if if let's say for example you are a church and you have a certain culture right and you are in a certain place and you have a certain culture and now this is kind of subjective right so so you decide and as a church leader you say okay this is this is this is what um, you know we are about as a cult as a, as a church you know this is what uh, this is our way of greeting this is our way of uh, you know so so it, it might seem like a little restrictive little, little um you know old-fashioned uh, but it it really helps like you're you are you're just putting it out there saying this is this is the culture this is the norm otherwise the world defines the culture for you right so you're saying uh, as a as believers is a culture now it's not a question of right or wrong it's not we're not saying that okay it's it's if you if you're going to be hugging someone it's going to be sin but uh, you know this is this is what we have so you can you can define that you know um and you can say okay this is the accepted thing yeah of course uh, we're not going to look down on people who are going to be you know we are going to immediately say hey, you did that but from time to time you're going to say this is the culture you know, and uh, it'll catch on right so yeah john any further question on that i mean does it no, 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 that's good boss. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay okay yeah success uh, you you raised your hand Yes, good morning, Pastor. Good morning. Um, I want to be, I want you to please uh, enlighten Oxman on internet marriage. A lot um, of this on internet marriage, internet okay. marriage, internet marriage. A so, lot of marriage, a lot of people have divorced after wedding. Maybe after a child having issues, maybe a child coming, being married, having in marriage, and uh, you know, it's because I, I keep on thinking you met a guy and uh, or a lady, and you love him or her, and at the end of the day, you will be seeking for divorce and putting us pastors in a, a giving us a dick. So, uh, what uh, council can church or pastors mm. give to a lady or a guy who came and said, I've seen the bone of my bone, and uh, this is where we met, maybe we met on the internet or we met with this. Because the rate mm. of marriage and the single mothers and single father is much as a result of internet marriage. In such mm. case, what can we do? Thank you, sir. Right. So when you say internet marriage, it's like they met uh, on the internet, maybe through a chat or uh, you know uh, some other uh, forum. Yeah, yeah. So the thing is, um, you know, the internet is an interesting place. It fosters connection. It gives you know you network. You you. But the, but also, um, you don't get to really know the person fully. You know, of course, you can you know have chats and discussions and so on. Uh, but you don't really get to know the person fully till you meet them face to face, uh, etc. You can you can un understand them to a some extent. So yeah, so that way the internet is helpful. Also has its downsides. Okay. So so the thing is the important thing is this you know uh, whether we meet in person or 
on the internet or you know um, the, the the real problem is um, the real challenge is to have a proper understanding of what marriage is you know you might have feelings for that person you might uh, say okay i i'm serious about this person and maybe we are we are and you might like certain you know characteristics about that person and then you come to your own conclusion saying okay we are meant for life or you know we are uh, you know meant for a long term commitment and so on you decide well uh, what what however it is you know the thing is to prepare oneself or both the people uh, both people involved need to prepare themselves for what's ahead need to understand what marriage is because marriage is being defined distorted uh, by various views and also we have our own tradition and culture uh, which need we need not be always good you know add to the mix so one needs to be prepared you know we we see that we are living in a time where one has to be prepared for marriage um, and uh, one needs to understand what marriage is and understand the person so which means that one needs to go through a marriage preparation it could be by the church it could be by a ministry uh, it but it's so so important to do that and during the course of the you know marriage preparation well you might reach a stage where you say that okay you know this person is not you know not for me okay and uh, we've had some certain uh, circum certain situations where uh, you know halfway through the couple decided well there are too many things there are too many differences there are too many uh, you know which we didn't talk about initially we thought okay we were we were excited and we wanted to get married and and all that but then we when we talk about uh, this is what marriage is and there are too many things that we didn't really understand that we didn't really look into and uh, you know then they actually stopped there and, and it is great that they've stopped right there rather than getting married and you know uh, getting separated after that so yeah so so success yeah so this is the thing you know respect to how people have met to have an understanding of marriage to be prepared for what's ahead is very very crucial and i think that will really solve now that will actually equip the person equip the couple but still they have to live it out you know they have to make their decisions they it's it's up to them but the fact is they have the understanding and or the fact is also that they can lean into god right they can involve now invite uh, god in there because many people many people don't do that they don't invite they don't factor in uh, god's presence and uh, uh, they don't invite uh, him into the marriage at all right so um, so now they are actually in a better place to handle conflicts to handle differences to handle the temptations that come from the world to to you know to forego all these emotional attachments and so on um so they are in a much better place to uh, you know to handle this relationship this beautiful thing called marriage right mm -hmm. i hope that helps success yes sir that's fine right, sir right thank you Right. Okay. So, any other uh, thoughts or any other questions um, that you might have? Y yes, Pastor. Can I can I ask? Sure, sure, Isaac. Yeah. Good. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> I just want uh, also you to share your thought on a certain aspect of, like you are saying, where you grew up. Well, in our part of the country to where I grew up, uh, there were certain things that was happening. It's real now, but let's just consider the scenario. Um, at times, people get married, the husband and the wife, and after some time, the husband passes away. Uh, it was happening. Um, the family sometimes consider that, I mean, we don't want this lady or this woman to go away from the family. Let's get somebody in the family so that they can get married. Let's just even accept that the person, like uh, 
a brother passes away and they choose a brother who is not yet married but, but is ready or ready to marry. How do we look at it or how what's your thought? Is it mm. yeah? Yeah, I, I hope so, you understand it. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um I understand your question. So the thing is okay, um and usually it's this the man passes away and then you know there's someone in the family whom the family considers and then they you know uh, so the thing is um uh well and uh, you know it's uh, it, it's done with sincerity it's done with good intentions because uh, they you know they want uh, the the girl to be protected they want maybe a father to the children uh, you know a provider uh, who will take care of the family all that you know the good it's done with good intentions but you should also understand that um, you know it has certain you know though it might be accepted in society it, it has certain you know repercussions consequences like uh, one is the consent of or uh, let's say you know the the grieving uh you know the grieving wife you know she's uh, she's going through a process of grieving she's going through a season of bereavement so the question to ask is uh, you know has she healed completely right has the person healed completely you know there's a season of grieving and it might it might differ for different people right it might uh, uh, the, the duration right uh, it needs time so is the family giving time for that okay so uh, since their intention is for the good of the girl are they giving time for the person to heal uh, if there are children involved what about their emotional state you know are they ready they've just seen that the father is no more and so are they ready for one more you know person in the family to take that place and and the children are you know children go through various things right sometimes they go through guilt you know they they feel that okay they should have done something to prevent this you know they they just sometimes feel so guilty you know i wish i could have done something i feel so helpless my father died father passed away or um and and you know it's it's a little complex so the children also need to be in a place to place of acceptance right and they are also grieving okay then the other thing is uh, the consent okay well it might be tradition uh, to do this um but what about the consent of the of the woman right maybe she maybe she doesn't want to you know she doesn't want to get married at all but um because of social pressure is she saying yes uh, or you know is it what about the consent okay. uh, so that's that's also a very important aspect you know uh, are they forcing her to do it because even in india there are certain things that uh, that are forced on the on the widow right because she has lost and then you know so many things that are forced so is it with the consent uh, well society tradition customs could dictate various things but are you overriding the very basic right of a human being which is uh, you know their choice which god does not override right so is it with the whole hearted a yes or are they just giving it to pressure so then if it is a whole hearted yes then again preparing for it you know so so we we have come you know as a society and as a church we have you know god has brought us we have journeyed uh, to where we are right now in our time so we have the understanding of what marriage is we have the resources the word of god the spirit of god and the wisdom and the knowledge and understanding so so it's our responsibility to you know to Uh, maybe as pastors as leaders as family members to to make sure that okay the person is equipped for it right otherwise the cycle continues right there are challenges and uh, the society says yeah it will be like this you know it, it has to continue like this you just need to just you know uh, just bear with it this is how it is and and nothing happens then they they break away and then the children um they you know uh uh they have certain complications in life because of what they experienced you know uh, in the home and so on so the cycle again spreads not only with this generation it goes on to the next generation so it's it's very detrimental you know? so we need to consider all that and say okay um you know we we'll, let's do something different right uh if it's if it's help let's do it 
if it's uh, you know if it's with if it's with the consent of the person yeah sure but let the person get an understanding of what marriage is let the person be healed and uh, let the person uh, come to a place of strength and restoration before entering to marriage yeah i think i think that is what i would say uh, anyone else who wants to share anything probably john you have something to share um anyone else you're most welcome to um, share your thoughts also um, so isaac i hope that helps um yes yes pastor i i all utterly agree right. uh, with the point especially the consent of the woman yeah which is very, yeah which is very very important and then the second point yes getting the children at any age even at a young age for them also to accept because sometimes if the yeah. acceptance is not genuine it can backfire i, right. I accept that. i agree with you all utterly thank you pastor right right as it most welcome right. okay okay so um yeah so um so you know when we when we <laughs> we talk about all this when we look into marriage and, and sometimes you might come to the conclusion oh man marriage is so complex it's so complicated it's so uh, it seems like not so much fun <laughs> but actually you know it's it's the opposite of that you know while we while it has all these complexities uh, but it is uh, it is a lifelong companionship it's a journey of uh, you know where you enjoy each other right uh, physically emotionally spiritually um, there's a lot of edification that happens there's a lot of sharing there's a lot of joy and there's a lot of laughter and of course there's a lot of uh, yeah, you know uh, sharing of your pain and um, caring of one another's burdens and all that so i can testify to that okay so it's a uh, it's um, it's not always um, you know as uh, uh, we we are going into some of the some of the negative things it's always good to look at the you know those things and talk about how to deal with it because that's the you know those are the challenges we're looking at all the challenges so sometimes it's like uh, you know what if i face all this you know no you won't you know as you prepare yourself uh, you know i'm sure that you'll be strong and uh, and god's grace will you know lead you um uh, yeah so yeah i just wanted to mention that okay right okay so um one other aspect you know since we're talking about uh, physical intimacy and relationship and so on um the other thing to uh, to to talk about is also um uh, de deciding you know when to have children how many and so on you know this is sometimes uh, it it's just like uh, uh well we say you know unspoken thing right um because um uh, this is what happens I, 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 actually in indian society this is uh, typically very pre prevalent uh, there's a lot of pressure from the parents and uh, you know in laws uh, okay about children you know if a couple is married and uh, maybe for a year they'll just let them be in peace <laughs> Uh, you know and then uh, after that um, the typical question they ask is any good news <laughs> well, uh, so at least in the south of india you know that's what happens any good news uh, any special any anything special any good news and you know it's within quotes right so you know that uh, when when the elders in the family ask that they are actually asking about uh, when are the children due you know when are the great grandparents arriving on the scene grandchildren arriving on the scene and and things like that so there's a, you know every occasion every get together the same question you know um see the thing is it's um, it's okay i mean if you look at it in one aspect but then the couple could be having some problems right it could there could be infertility there could be uh, uh, you know maybe impotency uh, they, so they could be having you know all these challenges so for them it's painful to even hear these questions over and over again right so so as um, i think as families we also need to be a little sensitive to these things that uh, there could be other aspects to why the couple is not having children right 
Um, well, you know, having said that, uh, well, the natural progression is, of course, uh, you know, uh, because of sexual relationships and uh, sexual relationship uh, between the husband and the wife, well, children uh, are the natural outcome. So, so the question is uh, for the husband and wife to to talk about that, right? Okay, when can we have children? You know, do we, we want to have children immediately? Should we wait for a few years? Um, so it's it's entirely up to them, right? So so talk about that and to decide that um, there could be some surprises. Well, you know, to be ready for that. Um, so uh, talk about children, decide when to have children, uh, and so on. Okay. Um, and also, um, okay. In 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 case of um, okay, let's say delayed pregnancy. You know, you're saying deciding that okay, we will have children maybe at a later time later stage we're not ready yet financially whatever okay what steps are you going to take you know and also once you have children maybe you have two or three okay uh, are you going to take any steps so you know you um you're you're decided okay these are the number of children that we're going to have so any decisions um that you're going to take you know medically otherwise so you did talk about that uh, so that there are no surprises and and also you know if there is a you know if there is a, a miscarriage or infertility and so on um so the, the the thing is to look to god for that like to look to god to change um to look to god for his promises for his word uh, there could be you know many reasons why there's infertility you know it could be you know, n number of reasons um you know maybe something physically there is something's not right with the man with the woman what could be you know so um sometimes there is a lot of blame you know on the woman right the society says okay it's because because of her because of you know so um so between the husband and the wife there should be understanding there should be you know nurture and care for one another there is no blame here you know because you are one right and uh, and to be understanding to not uh, you know to not uh, be harsh and rude and trample the other person uh, because of this you know to look to god to change the situation and there are so many testimonies where people just gave up the couple just gave up they said okay uh, medically it's not possible and then god did a miracle right or it could also be certain things that they need to change. Maybe it's a lifestyle. Maybe it's something to do with their their own bodies and you know sperm count and all that. And and so they can do some medical intervention, you know, which is available and uh, and uh, you know that 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 solves the problem, right? So there's no need to panic. There's no need to just get into depression. There's no need to you know blame each other and uh, be uh, you know so the, so because of that condition you know the marriage sh should not just fall apart right so so in marriage preparation we you know address this as well and saying okay you know should there be a scenario you know how will you handle it okay right okay uh, and the other thing is also about uh, you know ab about abortion uh, that uh, abortion is not not an option Okay. And, uh, um, you know, when is it an option? When the life of the mother is at risk? Okay. So that is the only uh, only case, you know. Because I, yeah, my mother is a gynecologist or she was practicing. Uh, she was a practicing gynecologist. And I know that, uh, you know, we've been talking about these things right from childhood. We, you know, uh, they, my parents used to talk about what, some of the challenges, etc. So, um, so the thing is this: when it comes to uh, life, is sacred, uh, and so, um, so also life in the womb is sacred. So, um, see, so abortion is a very, uh, I mean, it's a fine line. It's a very subjective thing, and uh, it should be only when there is threat or danger, you know. To, that that is when the doctors also uh, you know should intervene and and do something okay but but even then you know always 
to believe God for a supernatural recovery and restoration, right? Um, but medically, yes, this is what the doctors also, you know, um, uh, have in mind. Okay, if there is a if there is a possibility of saving both the the baby and the mother, yes. But if only one, you know, they will normally tend to save the life of the mother. Okay, so so what what about um, you know maybe uh, there were some decisions taken to abort and uh, you know I don't know maybe you know uh, uh, people who are married and uh, maybe you've had that kind of a scenario uh, with you you know in your home so the thing is to again go back to God you know maybe it was done in ignorance maybe it was done willfully whatever be the case. Um, to go to God and uh, go to the Lord and ask for forgiveness and healing and uh, yeah and restoration right in that area uh, and it's available healing is available restoration is available uh, uh, and and the Lord will do that right um, so 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 that would um, that is when it comes to um, the whole topic of uh, abortion okay. Um, let's look at um, a few more things. Okay, I think we looked at um, you know as people get on in age. Okay, what about um, what about sex? What about uh, what about one spouse does not you know have interest in sex and and so on. Um, so so, so you know, typically we see that um, you know uh, men the male. Uh, uh, men uh, normally do not, you know, phys it's a physical thing for them, and they do not normally very easily lose their interest in sex. Okay, um, but for a woman, it's not just a physical act. Uh, a woman needs to feel loved emotionally before she can come to the place of uh, enjoying sexual intimacy. Okay, so it's actually an emotional intimacy first before sexual intimacy. But for a man. The sexual intimacy itself, it's all packaged in one. Right? So, so, um, so one needs to understand that. So, um, so the thing is to keep the joy of sexual intimacy right alive throughout, um, and also to do what it takes to uh, to have that emotional intimacy, right? to do what it takes to have emotional intimacy. I think we we looked at it earlier also that. Um, um, you know, having those com conversations, having those physical gestures of uh, you know non-sexual affection, like right? you know holding hands or hugging or you know all that. Between the, I'm of course talking about husband and wife, uh, very clear about that. So, yeah, so all those verbal affection, physical affection, right? So all that is required for a long-term, you know, emotional and sexual intimacy. So many times couples struggle because there's uh, oh you know there's silence in the home like the men men um, the man is completely you know he's he's into just monosyllables yes no maybe uh, he's more interested in his newspaper and also you know on his uh, social media feeds instagram or whatever is just so the, Absolutely, there's no conversation happening, and this is typically we're talking about a you know season in life where uh, maybe the children are uh, you know they're finished schooling, they are maybe into they they they've moved to another uh, city or town for their education, for a higher education, or maybe they've just moved out of home, they are working elsewhere, and the husband and wife are completely like uh, you know they're out of sorts you know because uh, earlier the children at least were the bridge that you could communicate now they are not there and or the props through whom you could communicate and so it doesn't have to you know come to that place it doesn't have to disintegrate or come to that place of uh, uh, you know uh, the relationship need not come to that place right so it can so intentionally again uh, we keep those things alive, right? Um, talking and uh, you know physical affection and um, and etc. Right? Okay, so with that we um, we come to the end of this chapter and we'll uh, I think we'll stop here right right away. 
um, yeah, I, I know that um, you know there could be questions. Uh, you know, there could be uh, other. So feel free to ask. You know, even about the previous chapters. You know, if there are questions in our forthcoming classes, right? If you feel that okay, this is a this is something that you always wanted to ask and uh, needed to be asked, needed to be cleared. Uh, you feel free to ask, even if the scope of discussion is, um, you know, if it's something in the what we have already discussed in the past, uh, in that class, you feel free to ask, right? Okay, so I guess we'll stop here, and then, uh, yeah, we'll meet in the next class, right? Okay, any, any questions, closing comments before we wind up? Anything at all? Okay, none whatsoever. Fine. <laughs> okay, so we'll stop here and then we'll meet in the next class. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, Pastor. Right. Bye bye.